as the Allies and the Red Army retook large amounts of Nazi-occupied territory, they came across a huge network of concentration camps in which the true horrors of the Third Reich and the Holocaust had been played out. Within the barbed wire fences, the worst evils of the world had been committed, and as the enemies of the Germans forced them back towards their homeland, most of the guards and staff who inflicted a reign of terror fled too. Some were caught eventually, but many more escaped and remained undetected in the years following the conflict. The prisoners were either force marched to a different camp, liquidated or left for dead, with no food and supplies, and it was a race against time to keep thousands of people alive. At Bergen-Belsen as the Allies took the camp, the site was in a dire state, with thousands starving and dying of disease. However, amongst the prisoners were a number of guards and staff who remained at the camp, and eventually many of these faced justice in the Belsen trials after the Second World War. One of these who stayed was Ansgar Pieschen, the man who was responsible for the kitchens. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Ansgar Pieschen, the cook of Belsen. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Ansgar Pieschen was born on the 22nd of September 1913 in Denmark. His father was a Danish citizen and he moved to Upper Silesia and more specifically the Polish part shortly after his birth. Because of this he gained Polish citizenship. Not much else is known about his early life and it's assumed his upbringing was relatively normal and that he attended school in this area. However, as the Second World War broke out, things changed greatly for him. On September 1st, 1939, the German army rolled into Poland with their panzers and they invaded the country very easily before quickly overwhelming the defending Polish military and taking over their country. The invasion of Poland sparked the Second World War, with Britain and France shortly declaring war on Nazi Germany, but it was only the start of Hitler's intended territorial gains, with him wanting to build a huge European empire. On the 25th of May 1940, after the German occupation, Pieschen was conscripted into the German army, and he saw action on the Eastern Front. The action on the Eastern Front was often some of the most brutal and intense of the whole conflict, and the Germans initially took large amounts of Soviet territory during Operation Barbarossa, before their ill-fated retreat. It was on the Eastern Front where millions of soldiers were injured in various battles such as Stalingrad or Leningrad, and the experiences of the battlefields on this front shaped the minds of those soldiers for years to come. The fighting was often incredibly ferocious, and it must have been terrifying. However, on the 25th of November 1942, after fighting for two years, Pieschen was wounded in combat after being shot in the hand. He stated at his war crimes trial, I left hospital on the 12th of January 1943 for Tropau in Moravia, where I stayed until March 1943 when I went to a POW punishment camp at Blechhammer in Upper Silesia. So following his wounding, he was transferred across to work in a concentration camp. However, he then left here after around six months before arriving at Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Belsen was a horrific camp in which Anne Frank and her sister would perish within, and it was known for its horrific treatment of Jews and prisoners. Brutal beatings were common, with the camp commandant being the beast of Belsen, Josef Kramer. Belsen can be found in what today is Lower Saxony in northern Germany, and it was initially an exchange camp where Jewish prisoners were held in the intention of swapping them for German prisoners of war held by the enemies of the Nazis. Later, the camp was expanded to hold Jews from other concentration camps. It was notorious for its horrific treatment and conditions, with a severe lack of food and sanitation, causing horrendous outbreaks of disease. Typhus, TB and dysentery, along with typhoid fever, were rife in the camp, and during the early part of 1945, more than 35,000 people died from disease inside of the camp. Pieschen arrived at Belsen and was originally assigned guard duty, however due to his hand he was excused from this duty. His papers were confiscated and he believed he was about to join the SS, however this never occurred and he claimed that he never once wore an SS uniform. Inside of Belsen he was made an apprentice in kitchen number two and after impressing after four days he then took charge of cookhouse number one. Whilst in charge of the cookhouse he worked long hours in two shifts supervising the kitchens and he claimed he was never given orders on how to treat the inmates. The kitchen was located near to some watchtowers, in which were always guarded, and Ansgar Pieschen also oversaw a number of prisoners who worked inside of the kitchens. During his trial he said, 
I was on good terms with those working for me, and as they had been well and were hungry, I brought them a number of broken loaves from the bread stores and distributed them amongst the prisoners in the kitchen. He claimed during his trial that he never mistreated any prisoners, however much of his individual case was based around his treatment of in particular two prisoners who had stolen from the kitchen stores. It was alleged by a prisoner inside of the camp that whilst he presided over kitchen number one, two male prisoners were caught stealing some turnips nearby the kitchen. Ansgar Pichon then took out his revolver that he was carrying and in cold blood shot the two prisoners dead. He did deny this during his trial and also maintained the fact that he never carried a stick or a truncheon and he even went as far to say that he never even used a pistol in Belson. It was his testimony against the witnesses. He did admit at his trial that he knew that many of the prisoners were dying from the desperate conditions inside of the camp, but more details came out about the shooting. The prosecution questioned him, and during this it was uncovered that Josef Kramer and Pichon, upon hearing that a number of prisoners were stealing turnips, rushed to kitchen number two and then number one. It was put forward that when Kramer and Pichon turned the corner and saw the prisoners stealing food, then they started shooting at the men immediately. As the camp was liberated on April 15, 1945, the British found a horrific scene. They found around 10,000 dead bodies, many who had not been buried and were just left there to rot, and they also found around 60,000 survivors who were starving and dying from disease. The SS camp personnel were then forced to remove all of the corpses and bury them in mass graves, and Pichon was put to work to do this. However, during this he caught typhus himself, whilst burying victims and was taken to hospital. During his trial he did maintain his innocence, however he seemed like so many who stood aside or took part in the ill treatment of others. Although it's not entirely clear how he was in his short time at Belson, he was an experienced man inside of the concentration camps, and it's clear that his lack of humanity inflicted more suffering onto the people of Belson. He was accused of being guilty of crimes at Belson and being complicit in the murder of innocent people, and the judges believed the fact that he and Kramer did shoot the prisoners who stole the turnips. For his crimes, he was sentenced to death. Pichon was transferred to Hamlin Prison to await his execution, and it was performed by Albert Pierpoint, the famous British executioner. Inside a number of cells, the condemned found guilty in the Belson trials were held, before a gallows with a simultaneous drop had been erected at the end of these cells inside an execution chamber. Before the execution, Pierpoint met with each of the condemned with his assistant to calculate the height and weight of them, in order to work out the drop needed to kill the criminals. Pichon would have walked into the chamber, stepped on the scales and then had his height measured, with Pierpoint working out the drop needed to kill him. The execution of Pichon and the other criminals took place on the 13th of December 1945 at Hamlin. The executions of the women were carried out first, before the condemned men were killed. Pichon was led up the stairs of the gallows and a cap was placed over his head by Pierpoint, or his assistant, before he was shuffled over a trapdoor, which Pierpoint had drawn a chalk X on the floor on. Within seconds of the noose being secured, Pichon was left hanging with the drop instantly killing him. He was then cut down and his remains cremated, and he was 32 when he was executed. The story of Ansgar Pichon is one which is so similar during the Second World War. A young man who in the worst hells on earth was unable to carry out horrific acts under the guise of the Nazis in the Third Reich. Within Bergen-Belsen, it's almost certain that there were worse war criminals than Pichon, such as Irma Graves or Josef Kramer. However, Pichon's act in killing two prisoners was still murder. It's also debatable how those who were sentenced to time in prison during the Belsen trials may have actually committed worse horrors than Pichon. However, his evidence of murder must have been overwhelmingly compelling against him. He was complicit in the Holocaust and did little to prevent the suffering of the Jews and other prisoners inside of the camp. Once again, thank you for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.